So what is VO? In February of this year, we I went to MWC, which is Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, and announced that we were going to take the Molin technology, which you're uh, well aware of, and MIMO, and combine those two. Intel and Nokia agreed to merge those two operating environments, creating a new platform, taking the best of those, both of those environments and delivering MIGO. The investment levels we're both making continue, which really accelerates the innovation on a single platform, reducing fragmentation by unifying two independent operating environments. Very goal aligned to deliver an open platform with open development. So what is MIGO? It's a fully open source software platform with open development. And I emphasize open development. What that means is the development and the advancement of MIGO is done in the open. Right? So everybody in the ecosystem can participate. It's cross-platform support. From an ADA perspective, it supports multiple segments. Talk at length about the segments. There's many different device segments that are going to be proliferated in industry. MIGO runs across all those, as well as it's being used in ARM-based architecture. So it's a true cross-architecture operating environment. It's got one set of APIs. One set of APIs that's absolutely critical as you drive capabilities into the uh, developer ecosystem. This means that the same set of APIs resides on all these device segments. Whether it's a phone, whether it's a netbook, we'll talk about the tablet today, an in vehicle entertainment system, a television, smart television, the same set of APIs. Migo has one set of APIs. What this really does is drives innovation across Migo in the ecosystem, regardless of who's doing that. So if it's Nokia, Intel, uh, Novell, who's here today to talk about uh, their involvement, the OEMs that announced uh, yesterday, Acer made a big announcement about their commitment around Migo, we're all goal aligned to delivering innovation around one set of APIs. And that's the MIGO API set. So a unified voice to developers. That is absolutely critical. I'm going to roll a quick video to give you a description of the MIGO capabilities. And then we'll... MIGO is an open source software platform that allows developers to build for a large and growing device market, creating the power to seamlessly stay in touch on any mobile device. MIGO is optimized for Intel atom based devices, creating a rich experience continuum across all atom MIGO based devices. Developer tools enable the creation of innovative applications and offer global opportunities to monetize applications. Exciting devices, creating freedom, ultimate possibilities. Come build with us. So you can see Amigo uh, delivers on the promise of a pure open platform, allowing the ecosystem to innovate, and that's what brings great capabilities to the end users. So it spans multiple segments talked about this already, MIGO is not different on each one of these devices. We have MIGO running today on netbooks, we'll talk about what we're doing with tablets, we have it running on uh, television, smart television sets, etc. So it's the same environment across each one of these. So having a platform, so having a platform architecture is absolutely critical. Having an atom-based Intel architecture to build on is a foundational element for us to deliver that common platform called Migo on top of that. And then having that ability to deliver a developer program that targets a single set of APIs, right, for consistency, forward and backwards compatibility. That's a tremendous value proposition. So the value, speaking of the value proposition, let's talk about what that looks like for the OEMs. The OEMs, it really gives them an open platform. That is absolutely critical for the OEMs to be able to deliver the value they want to to their end users. It gives them the best user experience on the internet. Migo is an open platform allowing multiple runtimes to operate on this environment, whether it's Java, Flash, Air, and uh, so on. We made an announcement on Moblin, and now it's going forward on Migo. Silverlight will be ported and run on Migo. That means the user will be able to actually have sort of like content consumed on Migo based devices. That is compelling value. It gives them the opportunity to differentiate 
and because it's an open platform, allows them to invest and innovate and build a faster time to market. The service providers see strong opportunity to use Vigo. It gives them a stronger ecosystem as multiple partners participate. It reduces their costs. Service providers need to develop middleware applications, provisioning capabilities, and when you have to do that across multiple operating environments for different types of devices as they start to expand their device portfolio, it increases their costs. If they can have a single operating environment that they can deploy on whether it's a handset, a smart television, a tablet, or a network, that reduces the investment they have to put into their network capabilities and provisioning capabilities and their management software. So it tremendously reduces their costs. It also allows them to create a continuum of devices that they can deploy through their channel. And what that does is brings customer affinity and loyalty to that type of device, as they create the connection between devices. And the most critical word you can say to a service provider is reduce churn. And this is what they see this delivering, is an opportunity to reduce the churn on their customer install base because it keeps the customers loyal as they bring them into their environment that's consistent across all these devices. And then finally, the most important partners that we have today is our developers. The developers love the fact that it's an open standard. It gives them a tremendous market opportunity uh, to deliver using the powerful tools and capabilities that Mango brands. So, one of the commitments we made when we announced Migo in February is that we would deliver the first version of Migo in May. That was a big commitment and we rallied behind it and we delivered that. On May 26th, Migo 1.0 was made available uh, to the market. And the reviews have been fantastic. It's ready for OSBs, we'll talk to Novell in shortly. It's ready for operating system vendors to actually build these uh, commercial operating systems on devices, and you've heard the OEMs committed to delivering netbooks uh, already based on Vigo 1.0. The elements we can deliver in the continuum, from the netbooks that we showed you just a minute ago with Heat, all the way to smart televisions uh, that Tom Italia described. So what I'd like to do at this point is invite Brett up. Brett's going to give you a demonstration of the compute continuum on the devices we have shown today. Great. Now I have to hold the mic and do devices. Exactly what Doug didn't want to do. <laughs> um, so he already showed you a lot of uh, the Migo 1.0 UI, so I won't walk through that a whole lot. I just wanted to point out a couple of things in case you weren't familiar as much with MyZone. Is uh, really the power of Migo, as we said, is, as, as Keith pointed out, with uh, developers' user feedback and uh, usability studies and things. What we wanted to do was create a rich, dynamic user interface that puts the information that you want and the content that you uh, like to enjoy front and center in a fresh, intuitive way. Right. So MyZone has a, an area where, without going into separate applications or visiting separate websites, I can see my appointments and tasks, know where I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to be doing, and getting and, you know, feeds from my uh, from my social networks and uh, updates from the media and uh, web pages I've been visiting. So all there without going to you know separate applications, separate websites, all there in a fresh and intuitive way. And uh, since he covered pretty much most of the rest of the, uh, the user experience there, I'm not going to talk too much about it more. I do want to go into the zones just to show you, you know, as, as he showed, this is where we access all of our running applications. And as Doug said, you know, Migo supports uh, multiple runtime applications. So I'm going to move through the compute continuum by showing you, uh, you know, here we have an, an Adobe Air application uh, running on the network. So this is great. I can watch, uh, I can watch videos, you know, and, and enjoy my time while I'm writing on the rest of my network and that. That's great. Now, I want to move over to our IVI platform, which takes all of that same goodness and all of that same uh, consistent framework, consistent APIs that Doug was talking about, and enable a, a contextually adapted experience here in the car. So here in the car, you know, we have a navigation application uh, running, which is you know, kind of part of the course you need that in a, in a car. Um, we have this, uh, this flyout menu, uh, allows us to get to our, our applications and stuff, it sort of has the Vigo look and feel. And because we have that consistent framework, so this is the navigation we'll be running in the front screen, but the power of the Atom processor and the Vigo software here allows us to do multitasking and run more than one head unit, not only have, or more than one display. Now I only have one display hooked up here, but I can get some tab over. Uh, yeah. 
in the uh, in the back seat, what we can have here is the same application. I've been looking for videos and it's found one I can't find. Um, of the same application running without modification, I might add, uh, here in the back seat. So uh, streaming media can be, can be streamed to the vehicle uh, in, the, uh, in the in the rear seat. Obviously, we don't want to be watching movies in the front seat. Right? Um, so this would be a rear, a rear seat uh, type uh, uh, usage model, but. The application is actually the exact same application running in both environments without any modification. And what we like to tell developers is, um, you know, because we have that same common APIs and same frameworks and we have all this great support, right, the amount of effort to move an application from one vertical market segment to another is very little. All the same backend infrastructure, all the same code uh, will work. Um, what I would like to see applications do is, you know, do a little bit of tailoring of the UI so it's a little easier to touch. That's but uh, that's typically less than 20% of the code base, and we have you know, uh, visual uh, tool uh, uh, development environments that can make that part really easy. So again, that's uh, using that same common framework moving into the car. And then finally, let me wake my tablet up here. We want to take that same experience and move it into uh, you know, yet another form factor. Again, uh, you know, the same kind of my zone capabilities, being able to quickly access photos and music and videos and things that I've been doing, getting updates from my social networking, and I can quickly flick through now and see, you know, the updates of my social networking. And uh, I think we're going to get more uh, more in-depth tablet demo uh, a little bit later, so I'll hold off on the rest of it for now. All right. Thank you very much. That was uh, explained. So what we're really seeing here is several things. One is the power of the Atom platform being able to deliver value on multiple segments with the Intel architecture. That's critical in order for us to achieve the continuum. So what Brett just showed you was our continuum in actual operation being deployed today. The second thing is the Beagle platform giving you a consistent framework across all these devices. If it wasn't clear, the application that's written for one of these devices can actually run unmodified on another device. Clearly there's input methodologies, screen, screen sizes that you need to adapt to to give a better experience. But that reduces the amount of work you have to do by a significant amount. Whereas said roughly 80% of the code is the logic in the application and the remainder is the user experience. So it really reduces the amount of code you have to change just to the user experience and not have to rewrite and recompile and retest your entire application in the logic elements. One of the products that we're showcasing uh, to this show is the uh, tablet device. This device here is a, an Intel tablet. It's an alpha stage. It is based on the Morristown platform and delivers a very, very compelling user experience to this device. We feel it only can be delivered with the power of the Atom-based platform. So what we're going to show you today, not only do you see how sleek this is very thin device, very well designed, very comfortable in your hand. So the experience that you deliver on one of these devices is not only about the user experience, which we'll talk a bit more about, it's also about the physical feel of this device. The tremendously compelling feel of this device is important as the user experience. So we'll talk about the user experience, but the design of the device is as critical as the user experience is as critical as the application that rely on that. All those elements are very, very critical for this device, and we'll talk about each one of those. So with that, I'd like to actually demonstrate some of the things we're doing on this atom-based device. So, Brett? So let me just walk through this as he shows it. When you power this up, we have a screen count. Where's the camera uh, down? All right, you guys have that great vision that can't fail up. So you start up in the screen, the home screen here, you unlock this device, and it goes into what we call the simple. So this is called the simple view. It shows all the applications that are currently loaded either out of the box or that you've uh, downloaded through the application center. And you can scroll through, it's got the uh, scroll capability to roll up and down to find your applications. That in itself gives you a very simple engagement with the device. What I found much more compelling is when you go to what we call the panel view. The panel view is a fantastic innovation, allowing you to create panels that are relevant to the type of content or engagement you're having with this device. Each panel has a unique uh, categorization. Photographs, 
that you uh, have on your device, uh, videos that you have on your device, but videos you recently looked at, as well as recommended videos to purchase. Your friends, your social networking, all the active tweets and Facebook updates are all available for you. So you can go by category by category and how you want to see what content is on your device, what content you've looked at, what web pages you've recently looked at, and the one your favorite web pages tag. Very well organized uh, engagement with this device, categorizing your activity. So let's go back with a simple push of the button. It takes you back to what's called the simple view. A couple things I want to point out. First, this is a true atom-based platform allowing multitasking. That means applications when they're launched will continue to run simultaneously. What Brett did is just push this button here. As a user, you want to understand what applications you already have running. In this panel here, it just shows you each application that's up and running uh, at simultaneously. So you don't have to continually try to figure out through other mechanisms what's running. It's just simple push a button, and I can see all applications currently running. And then I can simply push on that that display, and uh, oh, there we go. Ah, that way. Hey, our technology. Is that Mingo based? Right. So now. So now we can, so you can see that panel pops up, shows you the applications that are currently running. It goes to the photo viewer. You launch the photo viewer, which is Amigo Photo Viewer, and manipulate the photos with the touch capability built in. Now we can go back to it, and what if we have a video? So we can run a video, so you can click on the video player. So it launches the video player, which is a Mego-based video player, and then you can go into your library of content, simply push the video that you want to watch, and then you have HD video running on this device. Just stunning, stunning video running on that. Any multitasking environment, continue to run other applications. 